Hey, this is uh, Storytelling Ron. This is part two of my Princes of the Apocalypse um, video on how to fix up this bad boy. So I'm hoping that uh, to give you guys, you can, you know, Princes of the Apocalypse, you can use it. Um, take out all the bad stuff and get to get focused on the cool aspects of it. Uh, so here's part two. I'll, I'll just run through real quickly what I did in part one just to say the Princes of the Apocalypse. Um, I talked about epic backstory in the first one. I talked about, um, you know, what, what to get them so that the, uh, the the party will really want to go after every cult in every location. That's the goal. That's what I feel like is missing the biggest on this is that you can kind of pick which ones you want to do and then do other side adventures. And it's great that, you know, Wizards of the Coast and the team uh, want to add a ton of stuff for you to pick from. So I would just say use all that extra stuff on you. Just have fun with those on little one-offs or extra adventure things. And then for, you know, the elemental evil of I, just focus on the elemental evil cults. That, I think that's the what makes this the strongest. So, and I, I have a storyline and what you can start off early on um, with, the, with the characters at first level. And then, of course, the location progression. You know, the outposts, the retaliations, the temples, then the finales. And the Fane of the Eye. And the sequence of how this is just kind of uh, extra stuff that goes with the backstory. And then, of course, uh, starting points. You know, with the villages and where to go and all that. And what's the best place to start at first level and what, what things to do. And all the characteristics of each of the villages that you can start at. Or locations. Um, and, of course, I broke down the backstory into bullet points. So that, you know, it's important where um, where they get, you know, the, the, the clues and the breakdown of the backstory gets um, unfolded. And then I do my own treasures as an option. Okay. So, oh, and I, I discussed the Feather Girl Spot. Feathered Gale Spire and what you can do there and how you can keep member in each of those outposts or generally when I do a dungeon I generally do like three to four you know action or climactic fights and, and that's it I try to concentrate it so that and so that it's either one to two evenings okay so it doesn't doesn't you know it's not a grind that just keeps going on and on and on from room to room to room uh, River Guard Keep I did that one Sacred the the, the Earth Cults Monastery and the cool um, Fire Cult thing. This one should be crazy and silly and cultists all freaking out and everything. So now we're at the Temple uh, of the Howling Hatred, which is the air, air one. And this one is one um, where I feel that the the main prophet should be actually killed. Um, is it Arissi? Yeah. She's so prideful and foolish. She thinks that she can just win. So I, I feel like, you know, that's perfect for, you know, her just to stay there and think she's just going to... Kill them, and then the players, of course, kill her and get the get the her uh, wind vein or whatever, her weapon, wind arrow. Um, no, no, that's wind arrow is the bard, wind vein, and um, and so they get kind of get that experience of of def, you know defeating one, and she's only like, um, she's not as her challenge rating is a seven, I think, and the others are like a nine or something. So I feel like that that, that it would be good to. Um, have them experience defeating one um, in in the temple. Anyway, so the here's how I would break it down. The bottom part, this area right here, I can't see my face, but this area right here where they enter, uh, to me, they're all going to come and I, you know have a fun combat and tough one, you know, and they got these arrow slits here, and they're going to start you know shooting and casting magic, casting their air blast or whatever their uh, the air air spells are at them. So it's a kind of a fun challenge and crazy um, right here, you know, and then all the, the, the main, um, the, the, the bar, I think it's a bard, wind arrow, the howling hatred priest, one hurricane, one sky weaver and 12 howling hatred initiates. At this point, they should be like fifth, fifth ish level, fifth or sixth. Um, and this, the howling hatred, hatred initiates are very low level. Like they're, you know, they only have a 20 hit points or less and they can't really do much, but I, I'm thinking that they're going to have, um, they're mainly going to be like the shields so that the other, <clears throat> the priest, the hurricane, the skyweaver um, can cast those spells in, from with through these arrow slits through and and maybe blocking the door. Yeah, one caster with each group. Wind arrow helps for a while, then tries to escape to the ziggurat, which is this part here. And then she's, of course, in here, which is the top of this ziggurat. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> So I just a little info here about treasures. Um, oh, there's some the slaves in here and stuff. Oh, there's a resting area, I think, right there. So this whole area, just that's it. That's, you know, that's kind of the one part. 
Um, the top part is more like a, a little dungeon crawl, which I, I think a simple dungeon adventure with decent treasures. The air cult blocked it off at 10, which is here. Now they have it to where they're in there and they're, they're kind of mixed in. I don't think, just keep it simple. Um, let's just have this be sort of abandoned and, and the air cult just blocked it off. I know that this leads somewhere, but whatever. Um, you know, maybe if they do want to go that way, they can just a large group of them just goes through quickly. Um, <clears throat> do, 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 do. So, so have the use use the monsters noted in the book. Add random treasure finds. Have cloaker in the shops. Lead them to the Umberhulk. So there's like a symbiotic uh, I didn't spell it right symbiotic relationship. So there's a cloaker hiding in here somewhere in one of the shop, those abandoned shops, and then you can have him them sort of fight it because cloakers are pretty tough. And then they can obviously the cloaker can then if they if they go here and decide to do this stuff, lead them to the Umberhawk, which is over here. So that'd be hilarious and tough. Um, that'd be a cool thing, and they get good treasure out of that. Um, so there's a stone golem in in the water, and then if they turn these things, it'll lower the water. They can see the treasure. I would play that as like hopefully they will they'll figure that out, um, and then they can you know lure the stone golem in one direction and then get the treasure from the other and not have to really fight it. So that's, that's probably how I would play that out. If they figure that out. If they want to fight it, they can fight it. But, you know, and there's obviously treasure there as well. Uh, the finale. Oh, then there's the... Uh, let me just go to the... There's a genie or something over here. That one's fine. They can... You know, what's described in there. Um, so for the... Oh, there's a sky weaver with a wyvern um, on top of the ziggurat. And that can... I, I would like... Here's how I would do that. I'd play that guy out. He when they come in, he's gonna harass them a little, but then he's just gonna take off through the, over this waterfall as if he's like retreating or something, and then when they go attack, he's gonna come back from behind. So that's how I, I like to make um, I like to make combat very dynamic in the sense that there's more than one thing happening. You know, you're not just facing them. There's things happening around. They come from behind. They have a layer of, of fighters and the casters in the back. You know, the, the, that kind of stuff. Um, Obviously, in the finale, there's going to be a hurricane, a sky weaver, five to ten howling initiates with seeker darts, and they use the columns here for cover. So, have Arisi is going to be so pride, prideful; she's just going to be up there and doesn't care. She's not, you know, that, that, that they're. Um, I'm just making it kind of silly and easy for them. And I, I know there's supposed to be initiates up there, but they're all drugged or something. So I'm just going to probably not even just have her fight them in the, uh, with maybe Wind Harrow come, retreats to her. I might have maybe some of these guys retreat to her if it, if it's going bad. Um, and that's it for this one. You know, that's how that one's going to work out. For, and, you know, I'm assuming, I'll, of course, players will always figure out something different. You know, they'll come a different way. They'll figure out something. And that's fine, too. But that's the basic gist of this, this level. Okay, so Temple of the Crest. And I might have got something wrong or, miss, you know, from missed something. But I will definitely review, you know, before each time we play... I will always review the book plus what I want to do and then get a good meld going. Temple of the Crushing Wave. So this is the water one. Um, so the entrance. The entrance is here. This comes from the River Guard Keep. So if they come that way, uh, I'm going to take out the ghouls in this. Well, they'll be in there, but they're not going to attack them. I'm just going to let them see them inside there as sacrifices and like, oh, the evil water cult, you know, make the people suffer like that. Um, there's a giant octopus that I can have in here to attack whenever I feel like it's opportune. Sounds cool. Might even do it when oh, I plan on, on this side is where most of the guards are and the regular guards, the, the pirate, the eight crushing wave weavers, one fathomer, one eye shiver, two dark tide knights with hunter shark mounts. Okay. So this, so I'm assuming they're going to land here and then there's going to be a fight at, at some point with guards here. A sh uh, I'm going to have a pirate boat come through, you know, and attack them. Might even have the uh, octopus come if I feel like it's, it's going to help with the excitement. Um, so that's, and then that'll pretty much take care of all of it. I'm not going to have them fight here, then here, then here. I'm going to have them all just come and, you know, at some point. Some, you know, if they do stealth and do something, fine. Then they can break them, fight them in different areas. But conceptually, I'm going to have it like that. And um, But I'll, um, but if they figure out a way to, again, not alert, which I doubt, but if they do, I'll let them kill them off in groups. That's fine by me. Um, so the hag, there's a hag living here in the central area. I'm going to take it. She has some ogre guards. I'm going to take those out and just have the aquatic trolls. And they're, they're in this area. And so then again, I'm going to sort of concentrate that. Uh, so some cold water cold servants are here to do 
they're going to be there, but they're not going to fight. I'm not going to have them really fight. Um, they will, however, rush to, to hit the gong so that the um, young um, the young dragon, sna- uh, turtle dragon, comes to help. You know, definitely do signs of sacrifices here if they can spot that before they, they fight. Uh, Westrooms over here. So that, I'll probably have the trolls, I might have the trolls under the bridges, just for the fun of it, or have them with the hag, or come come when she summons them. Um, and they could just be lurking in the water somewhere, and maybe just watch, you know, and wait until the hag calls them. Something like that. The West Room, this area right here, is a one-eye, a one-eye shiver, four crushing wave reavers. These will just come to the fight. And, and here's a list of known collaborators, ledgers, giving more, more info. Uh, in history, yeah. So this is more, you know, the backstory. They'll they'll find info in there um, with that. So and that, so basically, yeah. There's one. Oh, you can't see one fight here, one big fight here, and one fight here. This will probably be, some, you know, not not as big, but more info. So the the grand finale though is up here. Um, Gar Shatterkill. He's the main dude. Four Dark Tide Knights and two Crushing Wave Weavers. Wave Priests. Two Crushing Wave Crushing Wave Priests. So I'm assuming they're going to fight Gar, but, guy will, but Gar will try to escape through the water. He can swim into 26, hide while they see the treasure, then swim back out. Because uh, that's pretty deep under. Uh, he can swim down waterways to 28 as well. So, oh. oh, he can swim along here and then make his way up through here and then go down this way. Remove all minor creatures from this level and demon from 28. Keep pace going. Yeah. There's a demon in there guarding it. Nah, just leave it out. I'm not going to. That, that would... I, I really don't like that when like you're ch- you're chasing someone or you know something and then oh yeah here's an extra little creature you gotta fight it's like yeah it's kind of keep the story going so they might chase the him down into the sh- uh, that leads to the um, faint of the eye so the middle um, layer that all of them go to for to get their weapon and that's where the drow smith is and I'm thinking that Gar Shatterkill will be the one to defend the elemental eye, evil eyes um um what do you call it altar altar and so that would be kind of cool that him and then he'll have a group there with him he'll gather a sort of a force there that somehow and um or you know maybe i'll just use the the we'll, we'll look at that and see but either I'll, he'll, he'll have his force there if he's fleeing there then obviously he's not gonna have his own force there so i'm gonna play it that way and he'll have to help get others to help him they're there Oh, here's Fane of the Eye. Um, wait, I did these two temples. Where's the other temples? These are the... Oh, hmm, okay. Whatever. I, they're out of order, but that's fine. Uh, I'd like to do Fane of the Eye now anyway. So, one... So, I, I figured this out. One, one, two, three, four, five, as is. Interesting stuff. So, leave the, leave the first initial parts um, as is. One, two... Three, four, five. Interesting. Yeah, those are kind of like um, tricky trap things too. So that's cool. So those are cool. Six to eight. Probably take out the water weirds. Combat. Plenty of real action coming up. Just cool ambient water scenery. Roar of the waterfall and cave. Yeah, this part right here. Two fighting two water weirds is just what's the point? You know, it's not really because you got a lot, of, lot to fight story wise. I don't think they need to deal with water weirds. Um, seven here. Just be a temporary room used by cultists. Any here can be defeated easily, so role play, rest, cower, pray, look delusional. You know, I took out I take out the lizard, lizard folk. I just think that's too much. Um, just, just why well, have a, you know? It's just like focus on the story and not on like little extra side stories and plot twists and stuff. And even if like oh they're gonna fight with us, it's gonna be tedious because you have eight or ten lizard folk. You're gonna have to play in there in the game i mean i would i would role play it out anyway but i just think it's it, it's gonna you know diffuse the story and the pacing nine i would do gas pores that paralyze upon bursting in nine and have two or three grails float down and attack because they don't i think it only has one grail and if they're going to be like sixth level i think that's just, it's going to be kind of boring so i'm going to make it more a little more like a trappy uh, craziness. 10, 11, 12. Uh, 10, 11, and 12. 
as is, but take out Spectre Combat, the ghost, uh, just eerie Spectre Ghost. Visions of dwarves and Grimlops fighting or something. Also, Dwarf 8 and 10 is good. So information, you know, the ghost speaks to them. Plus more info on backstory. Drowsmith is nearby. His tools, etc. use them. So it's one of the best parts of adventuring is when you find a ghost or a info within a dungeon or in a dark, you know, in, in the middle of a battle, you, you get a resting point and, and aid in some way. And this is obviously info aid. Um, and that's always a great moment in a, uh, in, as a DM and, and the players. So, so you want to put the, you know, want to have those in there and not just have constant fighting the whole time. You want to have a pacing and a story re, reinvigorate the story part of it all and then fight again. But don't, don't have every room as combat, you know, that's too, too much. It's too much of a grind. So yeah, I took out 10, 11, 12, no fighting, just visual, check it out. You know, the, I think that'd be cool to see dwarves and Grimlocks fighting just, you know, the vision of it. 13 okay there's hill giants have fun with this play game this this should be kind of fun and silly so i'm gonna have the two hill giants in there playing a game of craps or some sort of dice game you know get the players involved um they offer safe passage they you know goofy trinkets maybe they can bribe hill giants as mercenaries you know maybe they have no allegiance can be devious and let hill giants pretend that so you also though if you're an evil dm i don't know if i am or not i mean i'm I'm, I'm not, but you could have it so that the hill giants turn on them at the final ballot battle, especially if you feel like they're really overpowering or powered and they're going to win for sure. Then the giants could be like, well, we'll work for you and you pay them. And, but then they see, you know, and you can obviously have them detect that they're going to turn on them at some point as well. But I think this would be a fun, you can have a dice game. They could play a little, quick little dice game against the giants, you know, and gamble and stuff. Okay. 14, 15, 16, 17. Uh, 14, 15, 16, and 17. So I like the Minotaurs. Definitely have a great battle here. Use Charge and Reckless. Uh, one tough Minotaur, Zegdar, five Minotaurs. Have good treasure too. That's pretty fun. I think this is a good one. I think too, the if if the Prophets can't bring their own dues, like if Gar, Shatter, Gar is Shatter Kill or whatever, if he is, is fleeing, he could probably go to them to get help. Um, so the Minotaurs are kind of cool. I just think that's a cool little thing. They do their fire breath or whatever. Uh, 18 for backstory, have the draft Smith tools here in tune that can damage weapons. Okay. So here, here's where I would put the, the drow forge maybe, and his, um, tools so that they, ah, that's it. That's the thing that, oh, in the backstory, just to recap on one. So all the prophets, they all, all the prophets got weapons given to him by the elemental evil eye here and so um and that's what opens the gates and when they put their weapon into the gate throw it or whatever the uh, the prince prince of elemental evil will come they're, they're the one they want but it has been said that if the weapons are blemished in any way cracked or whatever and they're invulnerable to any damage except by the hammer that made them okay so that's what that is so that's the re so they have a reason now to come to the faint of the eye and find that weapon to 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 damage the uh, uh, find the hammer to damage their weapons to then throw into the gates. <sighs> Twenty. Okay, so just describe scene where cultists are allowed to fight each other. Uh, bloody dead ransacked all groups. Oh, that's here. Yeah, so that's there's like some fighting going on there. I'm like, take that out. Just have it be a, a, a visual, cool visual atmosphere. Twenty one. So finale. Uh, Nineteen seems amusing. Okay, I don't remember what that was exactly, but so use that. Twenty-one temple finale. One prophet with entourage who will be called here to defend the eye. Okay. Also, the element elemental eye can call. You know, if there's time, one of the prophets to come and protect it because it knows that they're here, and that could be played out as well. If Gar's already there, then he'll assume that he's going to protect him. If Gar is not there, then obviously the elemental eye will call one, and one of them will come with their entourage too. And would be cool too is if like if it's if you can kind of coordinate, if they're coming this way, then you could kind of meet them, the the prophet, before they even get there. But whatever. If the party did not follow a prophet here, one will come. They will enter through their respective sector with groups. So party could encounter them sooner, right? Based on, because there's there's four entrances and they're all like, I think water, I don't know, earth, fire, and air somewhere. Um, so the eye altar must be destroyed either way to stop the will of the prophet. So this thing must be destroyed. That can be pretty basic. Um, and so that, destroying this and getting the hammer, obviously, two major goals of the fan of the eye. So there. 
So as you can see, I took out a lot of the combat, the unnecessary smaller minor combats. To me, we're not. Just keep it cool visuals and atmosphere. Uh, the plunging turrets. Keep it as is. Pretty nice and different feel for this one. So interesting throughout. Can, could streamline some of the weaker creatures. They are there, but either do not fight or role play the fight with a few dice. Easy, a little frustrating. Done. So this one was, I thought was okay. Um, yeah, and some of the minor creatures are not necessary. This one's pretty freaky deaky. Um, definitely got to understand where all the paths go through here in the water and how they got to deal with that stuff. So that that's definitely, I did read through it and I'm like, wow, okay, got to figure all that out. Okay. Um, and that's, oh, this is the geode. This is the one, this is the finale where they, oh, so this is the Gar Shatter Kill. So this is one where they go to the gate, though, and they got to deal with that and close it. So there's that point, though. you got to close it, otherwise the gate, you know, it gets summoned. So there's that aspect of it. So, um, and this is obviously the water finale. Um, okay, so the Temple of the Black Earth. So now I'm kind of going back up one to the Black Earth one. The top chasm, oh, this one here, one and two. This is the entrance to the, um, from the monastery. The gargoyles are good. I, I kind of like that. Uh, secret area is cool. This area back here. And this is, of course, where the finale is. So, you know. Um, it'd be cool, though. The gargoyles definitely um, try to knock them off. That's, that's that's cool. And flees to there. And that could be interesting. They could, they could you know, come this way and decide something in, in, to do here. Uh, I definitely make that secret door very hard to find. Because then they just get to the finale and they can skip all this. Which is still cool. but Or sort of cool. Not cool. I don't know. All right. So, um... Battle Royale, 3, 4, 5, 7, 18, 19, 20. All this area right here. Battle Royale, man. And they should be 7th, 8th level. There's four Durgars, Durgar, Durgar, uh, the Burrow Shark, the Bullets, the Boulets, uh, the Stone Melder, Black Earth Guards, four of those, and uh, Black Earth Priests. They're all going to be here coming in to, um, to fight the player characters when they come. Uh, so that would be, that's a tough one. That would be Battle Royale. Uh, eight interesting keep as is. What was it? Oh, this one here. Yeah, there's a. I'd make him invisible and let Gollum fight. He just hides, fearful. Maybe makes a fumble, is discovered, gives up info if released. Yeah, there's some dude in there that um, is making the go stone golems. So that could be just interesting. Uh, nine, chain bullets fine. Just a cool visual. Don't mess with it. I wouldn't if, if there's bullets in there, blaze or bullets in there. Just yeah, I wouldn't have a fight. I would just oh wow, that's where they raise them and stuff. 10 just getting across interesting i'd make bullets on the right side so they have to cross on the left yeah the bullets are over here um and they have to cross this way etten fine number 12 it's kind of a little battle although i think at this if they're six seventh uh, six levels of party I, they probably kill them pretty quickly so uh, is it even important anyway we'll see i you might even just not fight them because there's so many of them 13 14 15 16 13, 14, 15, and 16. Okay. The Dow Smith is good. Have two here and four at 16. 16. Uh, well armored and armed ogres. Yeah, the ogres. So that's pretty cool. Uh, good armor and armed treasures in here. I think we, is, 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 is cool. 23. Keep. Oh, so the, the ogres should be tougher. I would make them a little tougher. You know, there's some, there's some uh, stuff out there you can find. Tougher ogres with armor, weapons. Brutes, you know, ogre brutes, ogre alphas, or whatever. 23. Yeah, that's my dog. Let me go check on that. I'll be right back. Okay, my dog. Dog is just barking at something. Okay, where am I at here? Uh, the Dow Smith, good armor. Okay, 23. This one. Keep simple, uh, gnome near death, shackled, meant to be sacrificed soon, ritual to be buried alive, more story info if needed. Uh, 24. And I'm sure I've taken out some sort of combat thing. 24. Golem faces corridor out. Avoid. So there's a golem there that they can just avoid. He's just guarding that area. That's it. 21, 22. Okay, the big finale. Marlos and Shadow Demon. Using his earth passage, he will escape to Thane and or Earth Geode. I would, I would definitely want to have Marlos escape, um, you know, through the secret door or do his uh, Earth passage. This guy can obviously escape. He's going to do his um, so to get to the geode thing level. And if he doesn't, he doesn't. You know, if the players get him, they get him. Um, but I would definitely have in my mind that he's going to try to escape. 
Okay, so that's it. That's you know. So see how I kind of instead of having them go room to room to room and fight each thing, I'm going to make all of these guys come come to them and just do one final fight, and then when they go through the rooms, it's pretty quick. You know. The black geode. So this is the earth geode. Um, so this is where Marlos will escape to if he doesn't go to the faint of the eye, which you know to help there. Uh, so one and two, G one, G two. Two Black Earth Guards, Stone Melder, Zorn, two Earth Elementals, that's fine. They can kind of have a fight that, that ravages around this area. Uh, three, Roper, two or three treasures. So three is here. There's some, I think they said there's one Roper? Well, why just one? You know, especially if a party of seventh level, sixth, seventh level, um, I would do two or three with treasures they've gathered. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, role play, story, take out fighting elements, just interesting stuff. So how I would do it. 9, 10, 11. Bridge. Hook horrors is good. Myrmidon, not necessary. So here, there's some hook horrors up on the ledges that, that will try to attack them. That's cool. Here, there's a Myrmidon guarding the mud pit, which is not, I don't think that, not necessary. Just another, just a cool visual or something. 12, 13. 12 and 13. This area right here. Okay. Just have a bullet, bullet battle. Bullets. Waiting for party, they attack from the earth. Piles of rubble. Four burrow sharks. Four bullets. Two stone melders. That, so that'd be a big fight. That'd be cool. Uh, Fifteen is a dwarf smith. Is free. He gives them armor, treasure, whatever, something like that. And obviously, not all of them are just one cool thing, you know, dwarven type thing. Um, Sixteen empty, cool visual. Sixteen. Okay, so seventeen is the finale. Marlos calling forth Ogremok. 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 Oh, well. Just desperate flee from them. If party doesn't chase after from temple, he still calls forth Ogremok. Perhaps too soon. And, okay, and Ogremok takes him takes him as a sacrifice, then pushes up to land to find more sacrifices. So let's say Marlos escapes uh, in the previous temple and gets in here, and they don't follow. He's still going to summon Ogremok, even though maybe he hasn't killed enough people yet, sacrificed enough people, souls. Um, so that this is that'd be cool because then, boom, you know, he could come up on the earth and they have to deal with this. That'd be cool. Okay, Temple of Eternal Flame. We're going back up to the fire temple. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All connected as guards and garrison, guarding entrance and slaves. So this part right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, this whole area right here. That's all one big battle. I would just make it one big battle. They all come somehow. There's six eternal flame guardians, four eternal flame priests, four flame wraths, two fire ogres that resist fire, hill giant stats with armor class seven plate, 17 plate, large tougher ogres, and bastion thermander. So I'm assuming they're going to be eighth level at this point. Now, the, in, in here, there's slaves, um, salamanders, a, a, and azores. That's optional to me whether they fight or they just role play them, just have them role play and something silly. 12, 13, 14. And I, I think they should be in there because they're obviously slaves to the fire. That's fine. But I would just role play them and not do too much uh, at fighting with them or have them involved in any way. 12, 13, and 14. Ifridi. Yes, tough. Summon fire elemental. Flee as gaseous form if beaten. Razor blast is here in two eternal, eternal flame gardens. So they, they are doing their things here, but that's the fight. That's going to be an interesting fight. 12, you know, with this perilous kind of stuff going on here. I mean, the Afridi could just fly over here and cast a spell if they come this way and, you know, attack them from there while the the Razor Blasts and Flame Gardens uh, fight them from here. It's going to be interesting. Okay, so 15. Oh, here. Secret Dorvan Armory. Man, I'd make it way cooler, way cooler stuff in there. Because they say there's not that much cool stuff in there or something, but I would, you know, plus one stuff and a rare plus two stuff, extra Dorvan coolness for sure. I put in there 16, 17, 19, 20, 16, 17, 19, 20, 20. Okay. Emptyish, resting, maybe signs of hellhounds, but I would, yeah, I would just keep it kind of not much going on there. Uh, 22, I would, I took out any, any combat. 22, 23, 24, 25. Guard this area. Four, so four eternal flame guardians, four hellhounds. This is where the hellhounds would be. Uh, flame wrath, razor west. One chimera pet. They will all come to each other's aid. Vanifer will come to summon. Uh, fire elementals and cast some spells, but will retreat to 14 to Thane or Weeping Colossus. So she'll retreat to 14. Oh, here. 
and um, so she could go either up to the Fane or down to the Weeping Colossus. Oh, this is the area, area here. Sorry. 23, 24, 25. Uh, this, Vanifer's in here. I think I mix this up. I think all of this I put together. Yeah, I put this all together so she, she will just come to here. And I think this stuff is pretty minor. So all, okay, sorry. So this stuff and this stuff I'm going to put together. I'm going to, I'll probably relook at that, but whatever. I think this is probably um, minor stuff as well. But it, whatever the final finale will be, it'll probably be over here, in here. And then she's going to somehow, while they're fighting, she's going to retreat to 14 if it's not going well. Okay, well, that's that. Okay, so the Weeping Colossus, keep as is, has a nice, simple, linear focus. So I like, what I like about this one is that, move it over. It's that you're going to come down and it's just kind of a nice, linear, you know, thing going this way. No idea how the player is going to deal with that, but um, I like that it just kind of goes like that. And that's, that's a good, that's a good dungeon. You know, it's not going to be much of a grind. It's going to be an epic storyline there. Is that that's it okay that's so that's my whew that's my princess of the apocalypse how i would do it how i would streamline it how i would focus on the elemental evil and not on all the extra stuff the extra adventures which again i appreciate that they do that because you you when you buy a campaign book you get a, a incredible epic storyline and then um like 20 different modules you know as well um, with all the extra stuff that they have in there. And like I said, I, I would focus the progression right on from first level-ish, you know, villages and stuff first, and then all of the cool um, elemental locations. And of course, with the backstory, you want to feed them that info as they go from place to place, wanting to, to accomplish all the, the different, um, defeat all the different cults, to end them their, their bane and curse on the land. I hope this has been helpful, especially for new DMs or DMs that just, when you buy, you know, when you buy Princess of the Apocalypse and it just feels so overwhelming, realize that you can just go ahead and cut down, cut out stuff that you don't like. And, and for these, um, for these dungeons, you know, you can, you can, um, instead of having, having it room to room, you can really bring stuff together for, so it's not such a grind and there's just a couple of big epic fights and then a bunch of role playing visuals and atmosphere within each one i uh, hope this has been helpful you know it's just something i love i really appreciate people on youtube you know giving up giving me their stories their ideas their reviews for D and because i've been watching them and enjoying them and so i thought wow i just want to do this myself and enjoy um you know my view of things all right hope this has been helpful